Right, and we're back. So now we're going to move on to um, kind of the lunge, which is your stable kind of attacking footwork for a lot of different weapons. Um, there's sort of, as a bit of kind of weird trivia, um, the lunge sort of first appears in the Renaissance. And in the 19th century, when they had a, this kind of positivist view of history, the, the idea that, you know, history progressed um, in sort of this linear hierarchical fashion. So what was, um, what came later was better than what came before. This, the idea, there was this idea that fencing, like skill with a sword just didn't appear until the Renaissance. Um, and the reason for this is because there was no lunging before then, like they didn't, they didn't see any evidence of lunging in medieval sword fighting, uh, which of course is rubbish. <laughs> you know, medieval sword fighting has a lot of skill, um, a lot of technique to it. But um, yeah, sort of the, there was sort of this idea that fencing is rudimentary in the Renaissance with the rapier because they lunge and it gets more and more refined over time until it reaches perfection in the Victorian period. Um, and of course, like a modern human practitioner will tell you, no, like the skills, the skills are as detailed as ever going back as far as we have records for um, what changes is the weapons um, and also the fashion. Anyway, so I'll get you to come to your nice kind of even weighted stance. Um, you know, in fact, as a trick, you can actually dangle your sword in front of your belly button to see um, roughly how even weighted your stance is. So mine is pretty evenly weighted. Um, you know, whereas so back here, it would be pointing close to my back foot, my front foot. If it was front weighted, it would be close to, pointing close to my front foot and my back foot. So here I'm relatively even weighted, which is good for me. So for those of you who are new and are just, um, uh, and don't have like a particular stance or a particular guard you want to adopt, all we get to do, come on guard, put your elbow, maybe three or four centimeters out in front of your body, have your forearm um, horizontal and point your weapon out so that it's pointing in a, if you had an opponent, it'd be pointing right at their face. So the idea is basically your tip is high enough that if you extend, it'll stab some, you'll stab your opponent in the face. Um, you know, you don't want it, you know, you don't want it too high because I'd have to bring my tip down to bring it online to stab otherwise. Um, but it's also high enough that if you directly chop, you can chop an opponent in the sword arm. So you can stab and chop. You don't want it too high because then you can't stab and you don't want it too low because then you can't chop. So now we're going to look at lunging. Um, so to lunge, all I do is I extend out, I let my tip, I'm going to do a cut. So I move my, I extend and move my sword to the position it's going to attack from. In this case, I'm going to do a vertical cut. It's going to point straight upwards. And I kick my bottom foot out, or my front foot out onto uh, my heel. Um, so I kick my foot out straight like I'm starting a step. And I draw onto my toes and I drive with my back leg. So I'm driving to get a lot of force in. As my front toes hit the ground, my sword should reach full extension, hit my target. And then from there, what I do is I pull with my back leg. I basically bend my back knee to pull myself back. I can also push off with my front, uh, my front leg if I really want to get away quickly. I move back and I want to get my, and usually, usually my sword will be low after chopping through. As I'm coming back, I point at my opponent full extension so I don't rush in at me. And then when I come back to my guard, that's when I retract my arm back to my normal sort of medium guard. So let's just do like a vertical downward slash. I'll show you this from the front as well. And the movement is extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. Let's show you that from the side. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. All right, so I'll get you to follow along. We're just going to do vertical cuts, and then I'll show you um, the same footwork, but with um, slightly different attacks. So these are just like downward slashes. So extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, 
retract. Now let's just do a few more just to get really into the spirit of it. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. Extend, kick, lunge, retract. All right, so now we're gonna do it as one motion. So I'm just gonna call lunge, but it's really important that you follow the same order. You don't wanna lunge without having extended, because if you do that, you're moving all of your gooey targety bits right into your opponent's extension distance without giving them an attack to worry about. You wanna extend first, so that means one, your opponent's gonna go, oh shit, there's a sword out there. Um, and if I extend the right way, I'll even actually capture my opponent's sword with my own so that I can start displacing them, meaning that they can't counterattack me. But what that also means is if I extend, my opponent does something funky, I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Or they just do some kind of weirdly open disengage or something and just try and hit me or they lash out, I can just abort the attack. So I'm giving myself a little bit of judgment time. Because fencing is not a game of um, speed and power. Fencing is a game of, you know, of judgment and tactics. So calling lunge and lunge. Lunge, 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 and lunge. All right, so I've done that with um, descending cuts. So I think I initially demonstrated it with a cut seven, which is a vertical downwards cut. Lunge, but you can do the exact same motion with diagonal cuts. So you've got like cut one, cut two, let's just extend and lunge. But yeah, that's something you, you can try it at home, try it in different cuts. What we're going to look at now, though, a slightly different type of attack thrust. So if I've got my epee, I've got a pokey sword. I can't cut with this. I've got a, this, and you'll notice that I'm using a much, you know, my entire guard, my sword is entirely horizontal. And here to thrust, I extend, I put my, you know, I've got my tip on target, I've lined up my attack, and I just lunge and retract. So let's try thrust a few times. So I'm gonna call thrust. I want you to extend, lunge, and retract. But I'm only going to call one, so I want you to focus on doing it in the context of, make, of keeping that you know, extend, kick, lunge, retract order. So if you're all ready, thrust, 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 and thrust. All right, cool. So now I'm gonna get my knife and we're gonna do ones, one more kind of attack. So you can do rising cuts and you know, my descending cuts kind of look like this, sorry, probably not be lazy and actually do some lunges. My rising cuts are just the same. I just basically move my weapon to an angle as I extend and then flick up as I attack. But sometimes I might wanna attack with the back edge. So if you imagine my knife is sharp down along this little back bit, and I can take advantage of that by um, you know, whacking someone with the underside of the hand. When I extend, I extend low, and then as I lunge, I flick to full extension. So I will extend, lunge. Extend, lunge. Extend, lunge. So let's give that a let's give that a crack. We're gonna use some rising false edge cuts. So extend, lunge, and retract. I'm just gonna call cut and we're gonna try and do it as one motion just to kind of yeah, help you sort of internalize everything. So cut, 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 and cut. And you notice that um, 
my lunge and my movement's a bit stilted. I'm actually with the knife, I'm retracting my arm as soon as I can. That's a quality of the weapon. With a sword that's got a nice big handguard, I want to keep it extended to keep my opponent out. And if my sword just has a cross guard, like a long sword, as long as my hand position is good, I can keep it extended. A knife, on the other hand, has no hand protection. So if I leave my knife hand out, it's going to get chopped. So, are there any questions? And I'm, I do have a question for you, actually. Can you all, um, can you all hear the rain in the background? Or, um, you know, do you, or are you going to miss out on the lovely um, Blue Mountains weather? Ah. Is it snowing yet? Uh, not yet. It's not, it's not apparently going to slow and snow until the weekend. Um, so, you know, I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I have to see, um, I've got some family coming up on Saturday uh, for my oldest daughter's 21st birthday. So I'm going to see if we can do some sword fighting in the snow with them because that just seems like fun. All right, well, there's no more questions. I might just pause recording and then we can move on.